How's everyone doing? Today I'll be showing you my random horror Blu-ray shelf number one for 2021. And happy spooky season, happy Oktoberfest, happy 31 days of Halloween. I love this time of year and expect a lot of Halloween and horror related videos coming on my channel. And of course, starting off with this random horror Blu-ray shelf number one. I've done these videos in the past and you guys seem to like them and I enjoy making them as well. And my horror Blu-ray collection is still unalphabetized. So that's why it's the random uh, horror Blu-ray shelf. But the goal is to go through all of these, all 11 shelves right now that are filled with uh, horror Blu-rays and do these random horror Blu-ray shelf videos. And then afterwards, alphabetize the whole collection. I've been saying that for forever, but it's going to happen this time. It's going to happen by Halloween. So I'm going to do one of these videos uh, every few days, but it's time to finally do it and do it properly. You know, 2021, long overdue for, uh, uh, you know, how many times I've done these videos and attempted to uh, do the whole collection. And uh, it's uh, going to happen now, and I'm excited for it. And uh, for these videos right here, I'm going to show each one and say something about them, but I'm not going to go too in-depth because, you know, there's 50 to 60 movies on each shelf, uh, so I can't talk for too long, although I do ramble as I'm doing right now. I digress. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Let me uh, show you real quick just an overview. Uh, this doesn't include, like, Criterion's, Twilight Time, Steelbooks, Arrow Video, things like that, just mostly standard horror Blu-ray. So that full bookcase right there. And then some over here as well. And then I have some over there and I have random piles like everywhere. So there's some in the other room as well. But uh, essentially right now, this is the horror Blu-ray collection. But now without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, horror Blu-ray shelf number one. And if you've seen any of these movies on horror Blu-ray shelf number one, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which is your favorite on horror Blu-ray shelf number one. But let's go ahead and get into it. Let's check it out. Horror Blu-ray shelf number one. All right, so I just counted how many Blu-rays are on this shelf. It's my favorite number. Can you guess it? It's 57. 57 is my favorite number. It's a odd, random number. Uh, but there you go. And 57 Blu-rays on this shelf. Uh, shelf number one. Let's go ahead and get into it. First up, we have Animal. Uh, I really love the look to the creature in here. And any kind of movie like this, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, creature feature, anything uh, besides whatever else is going on, the biggest issue is always, you know, other people, uh, you know, and just human nature, essentially. And that's one of the biggest aspects for this movie, uh, people turning on one another and things like that. But I love the look to the creature. Uh, next up is The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Love the heck out of this movie. Uh, and I guess you can consider it a witch movie, too. Um, very atmospheric. I love Emil Hirsch and Brian Cox in their roles as a father and son team uh, in a mortuary. And they get this body in and uh, creepy things start happening. Uh, really unique and uh, inventive. And I, I love it. One of my favorite movies of the past decade. Next up is Devil. And the story is written by M. Night Shyamalan. And I definitely love how this plays out with the different characters and the interactions. Uh, great story. And I really think uh, M. Night Shyamalan does a good job storytelling-wise. A lot of people may not like his stuff, but I think he is talented in that regard. Uh, the Devil's Candy. Oh, what an awesome heavy metal horror movie. Uh, this one was excellent, creepy, subversive. Uh, I, you know, I love the artwork in here too, and uh, you know the heavy metal. And Ethan Embry was awesome. And Pruitt Taylor Vince plays such a good creepy character. Uh, next up is a study in terror. Uh, this is the Sherlock Holmes takes on Jack the Ripper. Uh, some recognizable faces in here, including uh, Judy Dench, uh, Anthony Quayle, and Donald Houston. Uh, and John Neville, really good take on this too. Uh, if you like Sherlock Holmes or Jack the Ripper, I would definitely recommend that one. Uh, next up is The Bat, really good kind of a gothic horror movie. And uh, next up is Annabelle, uh, the first one. I really like this one. A lot of people don't like it and people a lot of times prefer uh, this one. This is my least favorite Annabelle creation, the second one. Uh, I don't know, I just didn't really like the orphan kids and uh, just the, the orphanage in general. I think there's uh, some good atmosphere, I guess, but too reliant on jump scares. And I really did like uh, one scene towards the end, but 
Uh, I definitely prefer the first one, the, the storytelling of it, how in depth it goes and uh, certain characters and what happens. Uh, next up is the newest one, Annabelle Comes Home, the third, uh, basically like a babysitter take on Annabelle. Uh, this uh, girl is watching the young daughter of the Warrens and uh, Ed and Lorraine go out of town and uh, the one girl's friend comes in and opens up the room of all the cursed objects and lets Annabelle out and crazy things start happening. Some really creepy imagery in there. Next up is Crawl from Alexander Aha. This is a mixed bag for me. Um, <laughs> you have to suspend disbelief with horror movies, uh, but this is really hard to, to look past certain things. You know, people getting bitten left and right and still being able to outswim the gators and, you know, somebody's leg is broken, the bone sticking out, and they just snap it back into place and, you know, run around. Uh, <laughs> you can look past all of that stuff. Uh, it's got great gore effects. Uh, the gators look awesome. It's good tension. I like the lead actress, uh, Kaya Scodelario. She was good in Tiger House. She's been in a bunch of things. Uh, Barry Pepper, too. Uh, I did enjoy it, but it, I, I have so many issues with it, too. 2359, a uh, really creepy, unique one about uh, some uh, military forces on this island and about this urban legend. And this is a Chinese horror movie uh, just dripping with atmosphere. I love the ending to it. Uh, next up is 1408, a uh, really good Stephen King adaptation movie. John Cusack, Samuel L. Jackson, super creepy and atmospheric in that one, too. Uh, next up is 28 Weeks Later, uh, a little bit derivative uh, for uh, the franchise. I, I definitely prefer the first one, but this one is really good, action, palpable, uh, but it's just so much of the same. I think it's a little bit more action-packed, but uh, I do enjoy it. Next up is Aftermath. Uh, there is essentially like a, an apocalyptic event and these people are holed up in this basement, a bunch of strangers. Uh, Edward Furlong is in here too. I actually was able to interview Andre Royo right there for the release of this film. And with any kind of post-apocalyptic movie or apocalyptic movie, uh, people's biggest threat are people. Uh, and that definitely has this in spades. And next up is ABCs of Death, a really good uh, horror anthology a bunch of short films for each letter. It's a mixed bag, but I think it's mostly positive. There's only a couple of stinkers, in my opinion. Some really cool, unique ideas in there. Uh, next up is Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. Uh, some classic uh, entertainment right there. Uh, some good comedy elements. Next up is some good comedy elements here, too. The Adams Family and Adams Family Value double feature. Uh, I remember watching these in, when I was a kid, especially Adam's Family Values. I went to the theater, and I remember uh, the, the soundtrack for it sticks out uh, with uh, Whoop, Adam's Family, uh, the tag team. But they're both really entertaining. And then the new Adam's Family uh, movie's coming out with the CG animation. Next up is ATM. This is a, a creepy one. Um, I remember not loving the ending to it, but uh, aside from that, I really enjoyed the film. Some good tension throughout. Uh, Babysitter Wanted. Uh, this is a lot like House of the Devil, but I highly prefer this one. There's actually a payoff, and uh, for House of the Devil, I feel like it was definitely style over substance. Just like walking around that house for like 40 minutes, nothing happening, and all that for uh, no real payoff. I feel like I'm the only one that feels that way, though, but I really enjoy Babysitter Wanted. highly prefer it uh, over House of the Devil. Next up is The Body, another really creepy uh, atmospheric film about this body that goes missing from the morgue, and they're trying to figure out what happened. It's from the producers of uh, Orphanage and Julia's Eyes. Julia's Eyes is another really underrated one. Next up is Dark Skies, which is a really creepy alien abduction movie. Uh, I didn't care for the ending, but overall I love the film. And if you like alien abductions, I would definitely recommend that one. And next up we have The Eye with Jessica Alba. She is so absolutely stunning. I thought this was a, a decent remake. Um, I think she is just so breathtaking to look at. I'd pretty much watch anything she's in. But it did have some good creepy scenes in there. Next up is Extraterrestrial, another uh, alien abduction movie. Uh, I didn't love the ending for this one either. Uh, there, there's a certain romance aspect to it. And I could have really done without that, but I really like the look to the aliens. Very imposing and good tension all throughout. Palpable. Uh, good uh, effects in there too. And next up is Byzantium, a really unique vampire movie. I put off watching this for so long, but I'm glad I finally checked it out. I really enjoyed this one. It's about a mother and daughter vampire duo right there, and they're being chased by these elderly uh, vampires, this uh, kind of uh, clandestine uh, group. And uh, I love the history and backstory, and especially how they get turned, too. I thought that was really cool and unique. Next up is Tusk. I call this cinema absurd. Uh, I was able to get that signed up by Kevin Smith. 
uh, just uh, ridiculous and I think it's hilarious, uh, but it's creepy and bizarre. Uh, next up is Sleepwalkers. I was able to get the sign up by a bunch of people involved with the film. Uh, Mick Garris, John Landis, Joe Dante. And uh, I always remember enjoying the heck out of this one uh, with the cats. And uh, I like the cast in here too. Brian uh, Krause, uh, Madshin Amick, and uh, Alice Krieg. But uh, yeah, I love all the cameos with everybody too. And this was also signed by uh, Cynthia Garris and then... Dan Martin, uh, actors from this film, and Cynthia Garris, of course, is uh, the spouse of Mick Garris. But I love the heck out of this one. I know this recently got a Scream Factory release, uh, but I'm pretty much happy with that one. Uh, I might pick it up, though, because, you know, even though I have this one signed up, I do enjoy the film. So I'm curious to see what the special features are in comparison, uh, if the transfer is anything different. A lot of times with the Scream Factory releases, the, the transfers aren't that different from the previous ones. Sometimes they're worth it, but uh, not always. Uh, next up is The House on Sorority Row, one of my all-time favorite slashers. Love the heck out of this film. Uh, just iconic and creepy, and I love that. Uh, I definitely dig the heck out of it. So happy to have that on Blu-ray. Next up is uh, Bearing the X, a film by Joe Dante starring Anton Yelchin and uh, Ashley Green and Alexandria Daddario. Really fun one. Uh, good comedic elements throughout. And if you're a horror fan, uh, if you're watching this, you most likely are. I would definitely recommend checking this one out for uh, some good comedic elements too. Uh, both of the girls are so stunning. And I'm definitely uh, sad that uh, Anton Yelchin passed away. He's a really good young actor. I loved him in uh, The Green Room especially. That's one of my favorites, but uh, he was good in there too. Next up is Afflicted. I kind of even don't want to talk too much about this one because it kind of gives it away, but it's a found footage movie and I'm not a fan of that genre really. Uh, but this one is awesome and super underrated. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking this out and going in and knowing as less as possible, uh, essentially. But uh, definitely check that one out. Next up is Cutting Class. Uh, I remember Vinegar Syndrome released a bunch of these with the slip covers. I thought most of the slip covers were terrible. Uh, the artwork looked awful on all of them. This was the best one by far. Uh, it was just so juvenile and just some of the worst uh, slipcover artwork I've ever seen. But they were supposed to be uh, each to commemorate the deaths in uh, the movie. But they could have done a way better job with uh, the artwork for sure. This has Brad Pitt in and uh, Jill Schoen from uh, Popcorn and a bunch of other movies. Ryan McDowell, uh, Martin Mull, and then uh, Donovan Leach right there. And uh, this is a really good uh, 80s slasher movie. I feel like I never hear anybody talk about that one either, which is surprising given the cast. Next up is Carrie, a classic right there. Uh, and this is the Comic-Con exclusive slipcover from uh, 2013, The Bucket of Blood right there. And then the Babadook, Duke, Duke, Duke. Um, and I love the, the slipcover right there for that, the gatefold pop-up slipcover. Really nice release from Scream Factory, really good Australian a uh, horror movie with uh, an allegory for postpartum depression, uh, really unique. Next up is Excision. Uh, this one I feel like is so underrated. It's super bloody, it's super over the top. I love the humor, I love the cast, a lot of cameos there. Uh, and the lead actress, Jenna Lynn McCord, is amazing. Um, it is a psychosexual horror movie with a lot of dark comedy elements to it. The ending just will stay on your mind long after viewing. I've got Ariel Winter in here, Tracy Lords. Uh, you've got uh, Ray Wise, Malcolm McDowell, uh, John Waters in here too, uh, Matthew Gray, Goobler, a bunch of recognizable people, but highly would recommend that one too. Um, just bloody and crazy, and oh, I love it. Next up is Existence. Uh, this is a Cronenberg film with uh, Jennifer Jason Lee and Jude Law. Bunch of other recognizable people in here too, Willem Dafoe, Sarah Polly. Uh, but yeah, this is a really interesting one, kind of like a video game-esque one. Um, I always love Cronenberg and his body horror and stuff like that. Uh, great director. Next up is Exit Humanity, Civil War, um, basically a zombie movie. Uh, Dee Wallace, Bill Mosley, Stephen McCaddy, a big fan of Stephen McCaddy, especially in the movie Pontypool. And Brian Cox narrates it. Uh, it's very dramatically paced though, so it's not going to be for everybody. Next up is The Exorcism of Emily Rose, one of the better exorcism movies out there, in my opinion, with Laura Lenny. And next up is The Faculty. Always love this one. Uh, the whole cast in here, it's a Robert Rodriguez movie. And I remember watching this so much growing up. Um, again, this definitely oozes 90s right here from uh, 99. 
Ah, <laughs> look at John Stewart right there. Forgot about him. Uh, but everybody in here, Josh Hartnett, uh, Famke Jansen, Piper Laurie, um, Usher, U.S. H E R, uh, Elijah Wood, uh, just everybody. It's just just such a '90s cast, and I love these '90s movies where they have like just the faces right there on the front cover. Um, but kind of like a uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers high school take on it. Uh, Black Rock, which is one that I n I've never heard anybody talk about this one before, but I really enjoy it. Good tension. Basically, uh, these three friends go on this island that I think is deserted, but they find that there's these group of hunters there. Uh, and you can kind of see what's coming with that uh, synopsis. But um, Lake Bell, Kate Bosworth, and then Katie Asselton, who I always remember from The League. But uh, really good tension in here. And you get that uh, sense of isolation because uh, they're trapped on that island. And I obviously have to fight to survive. Uh, next up is Beetlejuice, the 20th anniversary deluxe edition with a lenticular slipcover. I remember seeing these go for like crazy money uh, before. But uh, this has the exclusive soundtrack CD sampler with booklet. But it's such a classic one too. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, Michael Keaton, which is iconic in that role. Gina Davis, Alec Baldwin, the whole cast. Winona Ryder. Oh, I love that film so much. Such an entertaining, fun movie. Uh, next up is Bee Devil, probably one of my all-time favorite movies now. A really good uh, Korean horror movie, uh, revenge movie too. And it just, this is one that I feel like everybody should watch. It's so underrated about this woman who uh, lives on this island. And she's just essentially abused by everybody else on the island. Uh, and her friend from childhood comes to visit and she sees what's going on and it's just a, a great revenge tale the whole build-up is awesome and then the culmination uh, the climax is just so uh phenomenal to me i uh so gritty so dirty and i just love the heck out of it be deviled i would highly recommend this movie it's become one of my all-time favorite movies now next up is a big ass spider uh you know what you're getting yourself into with that title just cheesy, all-out entertainment with a giant spider. I uh, love the cast in there, too. Uh, next up is Black Christmas. I definitely need to upgrade this one to the Scream Factory one uh, for uh, the special features especially. And uh, classic right there. Next up is The Craft. I know this one has a Scream Factory release, too. I don't really like the artwork for that one. But uh, I do want to look into the special features and transfer to see if it's worth it. Again, a lot of times it's really not. Uh, if you compare the transfers, uh, you can you know check up online. Uh, there's certain ones that it's really not worth the upgrade. Uh, I know a lot of people go crazy for everything Scream Factory release-wise, and they do an amazing job. But sometimes the transfers uh, aren't worth it, and the special features, and, and sometimes the artwork I'm not a big fan of all the time. But um, I do like that movie, too. Uh, next up is The Crazies. I got this for the, the slipcover. This is a UK edition right here. And uh, this is region B locked. And I used to have a region free player, but I don't anymore. So I actually might get rid of this one. I'm kind of bummed because I do like that slipcover. I'm a big fan of the movie. I think it was a really good remake. I actually prefer it over uh, Romero's original. Uh, I think just for the gore effects, the tension. Um, but uh, Romero's uh, just a genius with what he did back in the day, uh, especially with such uh, societal messages too. Um, but yeah, the craft. I used to have a, uh, I used to have a crush on a couple of these girls, and it's cool to see them doing conventions and stuff now too. Uh, next up is Chained. Uh, this is a film directed by Jennifer Lynch. She is a really good female director, uh, kind of a gritty movie. Vincent D'Onofrio is such an amazing actor. He plays this taxi driver that basically kidnaps people, and he kidnaps this one uh, woman with a child, and you know keeps the child for years and years, uh, and it's just uh, psychotic and just. Ah, oh, the, the performances are amazing. But uh, she's a really good director, uh, female director, and we need to see more female directors in horror for sure. Uh, next up is The Cloverfield Paradox, a uh, really good sci-fi horror movie. It's not on the same level as Event Horizon, but it's definitely worth checking out if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's part of the Cloverfield universe. I remember this uh, premiered on Netflix. And next up is the Bogans. And I say Bogans instead of the Boogans because there's an old man character at the end of this movie and he says, the Bogans. And I always remember that. And I remember saying the Bogans and somebody was like arguing with me. It's the Boogans. Obviously, it's spelled Boogans. But that guy in the movie said Bogans. So that's what I'm going to say. It's a creature feature and it's a lot of fun. Um, I really like the cast interaction. That's one thing that I always remember standing out for me. Uh, good release from Olive Films. Next up is a double feature, uh, After Dark Horror Fest, 
and it's Borderland and Crazy Eights. I got this for Borderland, a really good one. Um, I love uh, Sean Astin here, really stands up. But you have Brian Presley and Ryder Strong too. Uh, but uh, I wish that had a standalone release. It deserves it. And next up is Brotherhood, which borders on horror. It's really more of a thriller. It's about a fraternity and uh, something that goes wrong during um, kind of like an initiation process. And uh, it's just really dark. And I put it in the horror section because I feel like it does border on There's certain movies like Green Room. I think it borders on horror. Next up is Case 39. I feel like this one deserves way more love. Uh, Renee Zellweger, Bradley Cooper, I think because they're such big name actors uh, that people kind of, especially horror fans, didn't give it a full chance. But very creepy, very atmospheric. I love the heck out of this one and deserves more attention. I'm trying to remember who else was in here. Ian McShane too. And it's basically about Renee Zellweger who's a social worker and she's assigned this case about this young girl and she is uh, taking care of her and it turns out to be a little bit more than uh, she thought. Um, but I feel like more people need to check that one out. Uh, Chillerama, a horror anthology. Uh, such cheesy, ridiculous fun in here. Uh, from Adam Green, Joe Lynch, Adam Rifkin, and Tim Solomon, Wadzilla. I think Anne Frankenstein is my favorite. If you've seen this, let me know uh, which segment is your favorite. But I love some of the like classic throwback elements to it, too. Uh, the Conjuring, the first one, I love that slipcover. This is nothing new conceptually, but it's the best of its ilk, uh, possession exorcism-wise. And next up, we've got Cult of Chucky, which a lot of people didn't care for, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I like just how sterilized it is and uh, the actors in general and just uh, kind of a different, uh, unique take for Chucky, too. And I hope they continue to make more in this franchise. The recent remake was surprisingly good. That blew me away. Probably one of my favorites in the franchise now, but it was the only one uh, that didn't have... Don Mancini involved in it, which was uh, surprising that it turned to be so good given that I know a lot of people were saying, you know, they should get uh, somebody else involved because they weren't liking the sequels. Again, horror is my favorite uh, genre by far, so I'm a little bit more forgiving, and I do like this franchise overall. Seed of Chucky was the only one I didn't care for in their franchise. I like Bride of Chucky, it's cheesy fun. A lot of people didn't like this one. Um, I, I thought it was good, and again, something different, unique that they were doing, which is hard to do when you're doing the same character over and over for so many films. Even Curse of Chucky I liked a lot too. Uh, next up is The Houses of October Built, which I love the concept, but I didn't like the ending to this. And then the sequel was awful. The sequel essentially ruins this movie, the, the concept of it. And I feel like it was so disappointing. And this is a Best Buy exclusive, has a full-length documentary that inspired the film. Uh, but yeah, really creepy about people going to uh, extreme haunts and trying to find the most extreme one. And it's uh, got some dark things going on there. Uh, next up is the original Lost Boys. They actually sparkle, if you watch this. They were before Twilight. They were the first sparkling vampires, but a uh, really good 80s uh, horror movie, 80s vampire movie. This and Fright Night are a couple of my favorites uh, vampire movies. Uh, let me know what your favorite vampire movie is. I'd have to say my favorite vampire movie now, though, is 30 Days of Night. I absolutely love it. I would think Fright Night would be... I would say Fright Night would be two, and then Lost Boys number three. Uh, but love the heck out of this one, even though they do sparkle a bit. But from uh, Joel Shoemaker uh, and uh, Richard Donner production. Uh, and I love the cast here, too. Uh, the Frog Brothers, uh, you know, Corey Feldman, Corey Haim, Jamie Gertz, um, Jason Patrick, Kiefer Sutherland, Diane Weiss. A bunch of recognizable people in there. The noodle scene. So many iconic scenes in there. Uh, next up is The Lost Boys, The Tribe, which I need to rewatch this one. I remember not being a big fan of it. And then the, the third one I actually got rid of. Uh, I bought all three on eBay a while back uh, for really cheap. I think it was like 10 bucks for all three. The third one was unwatchable to me. Uh, people were saying it was really good, better than uh, The Tribe. I, I thought it was terrible. Uh, a huge disappointment. And last but not least is Lovely Molly, which is directed by Eduardo Sanchez, who directed The Blair Witch Project which I feel like The Blair Witch Project is the most overrated horror movie in history. I am not a fan of that one. Uh, I think the big selling point was the marketing, but I feel like if you went into that movie thinking that there was a real witch living in the woods uh, in Maryland, then uh, if, if you're over the age of five and you think that, then I've got a bridge to sell you. You know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, that was really what people thought. Like there was, you know, came out when I was a little bit younger and people were thinking, oh, there's a real witch living in the woods. But, you know, I... 
that was the big thing and people just loved it but i just thought it was nothing special it's a movie that anybody could make you go outside in the woods with a camera and you know blow some snot bubbles and cry and move some rocks around and make stick figures uh, there was no payoff at the end either i it was just people you know really annoying characters i just wasn't a fan of that movie i just don't get the appeal of that movie i Guess I never will. But I do like Eduardo Sanchez. I think he's done some good things, including Lovely Molly and the movie Altered, which I never hear anybody talk about that one. That is an alien abduction movie, a sci-fi horror movie with some good bits of uh, comedy, especially towards the end. But I, I like that one. And then Lovely Molly is super creepy, super atmospheric, and one that I consider to be underrated. Uh, they go back. It's a uh, woman and her husband. She moves into uh, her late father's uh country house it's basically her dealing with personal demons and then you uh you get to see a darker side of things and it's a bit dramatically paced so that might not be for everybody but the payoff is totally worth it uh just an awesome climax and uh finale so there you go there is random horror blu-ray shelf number one and if you've seen any of these movies on random horror blu-ray shelf number one definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know what movie was your favorite on this shelf and let me know if you have any horror Blu-ray recommendations for me to check out uh, to pick up for my collection. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf video. And look forward to Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf videos number 2 through 11 coming up soon on this channel. So stay tuned. And, uh, you know, again, happy spooky season, happy Oktoberfest, happy 31 days of Halloween. I'm so excited. So expect a lot of Halloween and horror movie content on the channel coming up. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.